A lot of people who parallel parent with a narcissistic ex are dealing with something called gatekeeping. What is gatekeeping? Gatekeeping in the situation is when a narcissist controls the information that is released to the public, to friends, to family. When they control that information, they decide which information is passed on to other people, including which information is passed on to the children, often using partial truths or outright lies or projections in order to control the narrative and to control the situation. It's also when they might hand out tasks or chores, for instance, take the kids to the doctor, but then they micromanage the whole situation and need to be in charge of exactly how that doctor's visit takes place. So basically they're like, do this. Basically it's like handing the information to the other, par other parent and then micromanaging it because the other parent couldn't possibly do it as well as the narcissist. The problem gets really deep with this gatekeeping because what happens is this is a form of parental alienation. It is a form of diminishing and devaluing the other parent in front of the children and in front of everyone else that makes the narcissist seem like they're the one in charge and they're the only parent who has the child's well-being at stake and well-being and, and, and is working toward the child's well-being, right? One thing they do when they're gatekeeping is a narcissistic parent will marginalize, devalue, and diminish the value or the worth of the other parent. They will also twist the information toward that other person, toward you, by gaslighting you and somehow coercing or convincing you that their way is the only way, or convincing you in the sense of, it's too hard to fight with it. It's too much to go up against. They'll put you in a corner through this gatekeeping so that if you'd make any moves that are against what they're saying, you look like the bad guy to your children or to other people who are looking on. They will gaslight and project and tell outright lies such as you are the one who's abusive. In other words, they make themselves look like they're doing this gatekeeping to protect the children. All of that diminishes the relationship of the parent you with the children and at the same time makes the narcissist look incredibly powerful in the children's eyes and in other people's eyes and in their own eyes some things that they're doing make it hard to spend time with the child they may get in the way of time spent they may refuse things that they should not be refusing they may out and out and out take the children and not return them when they're supposed to things that seem like they sh well they are technically not lawful, but they're getting away with it because they do it under the guise of the child's well-being. This is not someone who is doing this. So here's the thing. A lot of this gatekeeping can be done to protect a child. It really can. You, If you have to deal with a toxic person who is psychopathic, say, you may need to do some forms of gatekeeping in order to legitimately protect the child. That is different than when someone has a perceived danger or a falsified out and out lie about the danger that's present when they're doing it to manipulate. Remember that a narcissist will almost always, especially female narcissists, this is such a tactic of theirs to take information that they know the public, the law, other people see as offensible and then twist it to pretend like that offense is happening to them. They play the victim on purpose to manipulate and control everything around them so that they're in charge. They may do things like false accusations. They may make false accusations toward the other parent, toward you. They will use projections and gaslighting to convince everyone, including the children, that what they're doing is in the child's best interest. They twist words in a really subtle and sometimes not so subtle way that makes it hard to argue. They'll take grains of truth. So say when you had an argument with them, you got reactive. Say that they you had arguments with them and they would gaslight you. They would stonewall you. They'd give you the silent treatment and then they'd come back at you with more accusations, gaslighting and projecting so that you could never have an actual functional conflict that can be resolved with them. 
And at a certain point, you hit your breaking point and you just yell out of frustration. Make this stop kind of yelling, right? I don't know what's happening. The confusion, flustered yelling, most of us have experienced when dealing with a gaslighter. They'll take the truth, which is you did yell, and they'll use it to say your parent, your other parent is a yeller. They are always yelling at me. They're abusive. That is an abusive way to handle conflict. I don't ever yell. No, what they do is twist the truth, gaslight, project, and make nonsense out of the one thing, one topic you're trying to talk about, derailing every discussion into a giant escalating argument. They're escalators, okay? And they'll escalate you to the point of reaction, then they'll take that one reaction, even though it is a totally normal human reaction to react to that, and twist the truth saying, I don't know, I didn't do anything. They just like to yell at me. They yelled at me all the time. So that is one form that they will use and when they're gatekeeping in order to protect the children from the argumentative parent, meaning you. So yeah, they twist truths and they use grains of truth, bits and pieces of information from the actual thing that happened. And then they filter it through their delusional lens and force everybody else to listen to the gaslighting. Children are susceptible to this. They're believing both parents, they're confused. They may see what goes on, but not know how to process it. If you are the child, if you if you are the adult child of a narcissistic parent, you have probably witnessed this. You've probably seen where your father or mother was totally convinced that the gaslighting was correct, totally, you know, lost in a world of toxicity within their marriage. And you didn't know which parent was right. You just knew both parents were upset or you knew which parent was causing the problem and you didn't know what to do with the information. So you took it on yourself to sort of smooth the waters and make things better or ran and hid or whatever you did to cope. You had to learn coping skills. So maternal gatekeeping is apparently more common than the paternal gatekeeping. It's apparently um, so common that if you are to research it, you will find it in divorce attorneys repertoire of what they handle and what they can help with often. And it's almost always the maternal gatekeeping. So this I can say is probably a more of a predominant female narcissist feature, um, but not entirely. It's basically anyone is going to do it who is an extreme control. It creates such a barrier for co-parenting that you can only parallel parent. There is no way, well, we already know there's no way to really truthfully co-parent with a narcissist. We have to parallel parent. We have to live our lives in our homes, keep them out of it and let them do theirs in their homes and the child goes back and forth. There isn't sharing of joys and wonderful things and hardships and, and discussions and all of that together because you can no longer relate to someone who's unrelatable. You have to just protect your household and raise your kids on your own, knowing that when they go to the other parent's house, they're going to do their thing. They're going to do what they do. This gatekeeping actually gets in the way of that. It gets in the way of parallel parenting even because they're planting the seed in your children's head that you are a diminished parent. You are not looking out for their well-being. You are not the protect protector or provider that you claim to be. They're gaslighting their children against you in subtle, subtle ways, sometimes not subtle. And then it creates confusion and fear and insecurity in the child toward both of you really, but toward the, the one who is being spoken badly about. And they do it in a way that they, it wouldn't be considered unlawful, right? It's subtle often and it is, well, let's, we're gonna talk about what it can look like in just a second. The whole reason that they are gatekeeping is it is a means of keeping control. So here's one thing, a narcissistic person, when they, discard you or you leave the marriage or the relationship either way they don't want to let go of the supply they have one means of supply is control so let me clear this up supply does not mean the good things supply means any attention any focus any energy from you to them 
It doesn't matter what it is. It can be good, bad. It could even be ignoring them. They will still see it as supply, right? It's They're going to take. They, they're takers. So they're not going to let go of this person that they have a child with because it's a steady stream of this supply. It's a steady stream of attention and a steady stream of them getting fed off your energy. So because of that, they also need to stay in control. Remember that they're narcissistic. They need the power and the control. If they didn't have power and control, they wouldn't get any supply. There wouldn't be, there'd be nothing going back and forth between you unless there was something that needed to be said and it'd be peaceful and calm on both households, right? They need to stir the pot and create the drama in order to maintain their supply. They're trying to stay in control for themselves. They are not out for the child's well-being. Children to a narcissist are extensions of self. That's what they are. They are not individuals who will individuate and have their own lives. They are basically little minions created to serve and worship and reflect the narcissist's ideals, viewpoints, and delusion. They, they, there's an enmeshment that almost always happens. Even when there is neglect and abandonment, it's still about the narcissist. It, everything about raising children is about the narcissist. So knowing that, one of their favorite phrases when they are gatekeeping, one phrase you'll hear often is, I did this for the child's well-being. I'm doing this for the sake of the child. And it's usually placed in situations or it's often placed in situations that don't make any sense, that are places where it's like, how is that either, how's that good for the child or bad for the child? It's kind of a neutral thing. So they're doing that on purpose to plant the seed of their own delusional narrative setting about any situation. So if everyone in the world hears the phrase over and over, I do everything for my child's well-being, I live for my child, how are you going to argue with a mother who says that or a father, right? So other ways it might look, you may, it may seem like the superhero parent to the outside. Um, they may they may overdo it for the sake of being seen overdoing it. They may be highly involved with every aspect of a child's life. It's an enmeshment, right? Narcissists who are this controlling have a perfectionist attitude toward that control. It's an absolute, an absolute control. And through that, they can look like highly achieved caregivers. They can appear to be on the outside the one doing all the work. They also like to play martyrs oftentimes. They will act like everyone's against them or I've heard of narcissistic mothers who gatekeep and also enmesh so deeply in their children's lives that their adult children have to turn to them for everything or else the martyr comes out of their mother and she will bemoan and cry and you know have a lot of drama about how no one ever appreciates her. When in fact, the person is only just trying to live their life. It has nothing to do with her. They tend to have well-tended homes or well-tended kids. You know, it looks like perfection on the outside when they're gatekeeping. It can. So just to conclude here, gatekeeping can happen with pretty much any parent. It is meant to assert control over the situation, be in charge, be the boss of being the boss parent, right? Parental gatekeeping in the narcissistic person is when that narcissistic person's attitude and actions serve to sever or diminish or affect negatively the quality of relationship with the child and the other parent, with the child and you. Have you had this happen? If you would like to share your experience, please make a comment in the comment section. When a narcissist does it, it is highly toxic. It is meant to control everything so that they are never questioned and you lose your connection, your relationship with your children. It is taking something that could be a means of protection and twisting it to be a means of control for the narcissistic parent. I am Lise Colucci. I am one of the life coaches at queenbeing.com. 
If you need any help with anything, any coaching or group coaching, or if you need peer support, check out all the information in the main description of every video. Otherwise, hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.